If you watch this video, I guarantee you'll see things that do not exist. Don't believe me? Well, let's give it a try. Let's start with an experiment from Joseph Albert's book, The Interaction of Color. So what we have here is we have a black background with two circles. We have a, a red circle and a white circle. And you'll see in the center, there's a, a little dot for marking. We'll start by staring steadily at the marked center of the red circle for 30 seconds. Let's begin. Now, I have a timer off screen, but I'm not gonna show it to you just so you won't be distracted. Now, don't look away. But as we stare, start to notice some of those silver sickle-like shapes appearing in the peripheral edges of the red circle. Now, don't look at them. Keep staring directly in the center. Staying focused is more difficult than it seems. When the timer elapses, so don't do this yet, you will quickly shift your focus to the center of the white circle. So you're gonna shift your focus in three, two, one, go. The circle no longer appears to be white, but rather a, a bluish green or a green color. Now, now the paper didn't change colors, right? But something happened physically, and it's what we call the after image. When we stare at the same image for a long period of time, and in our case, the, the red circle, the, the red photoreceptors in our eyes start to fatigue. Then when we quickly switch our attention, it takes a few seconds before the cones can find their new normal on the white circle. And what we experience is a rough visual negative of that red. Now this is happening in subtle ways all the time as we live life, but most of the time we don't notice it or are moving our attention quickly enough that it doesn't make things annoying. Now, we can make this effect even more interesting. Let's try this. Stare at the dot in the middle of the square with the yellow circles for another 30 seconds. All right, the timer begins. While concentrating on the dot, what do you think the effect will produce given your last experience? So don't let your eyes waver or move to any other position. Stay locked into that point. Remember the last example where it was red? Well, now these are yellow. The yellow cones in your eyes are slowly fatiguing and setting us up for a really unique effect. On my mark, you will move your eyes to the empty white square. So let me count you down. Three, two, one, go. What do you see? Instead of seeing just blue circles, which you may have anticipated, we experience this double illusion. We see diamond shapes in, in some of those leftover areas that are yellow. So this is sometimes what we call contrast reversal. Isn't that just incredible? Here's why this matters as artists and filmmakers. Often we are doing detailed work and staring at the, the same images or even the same portion of an image for long periods of time. Like we're talking about minutes, not just seconds like in this example. Without a reference point, our eyes slowly start to drift and become less sensitive to the work that we're doing. This is why a lot of amateur colorists have work that looks so heavy-handed and inconsistent. They will sit down and begin the work at the first shot, and the longer they stay in that session, the more they will get acclimated to a look and then need to push it further to get the same visual experience of the color. And this will continue to get worse if no reference points are found. The examples we looked at today and the inspiration for the discussion came from this book that has been a longtime favorite of mine called The Interaction of Color. If you wanna dive deeper into this world, I would highly encourage you to purchase a copy of this book. Hey, as well as subscribe to this channel. Uh, that way you will not miss any of the future dives into color theory. You can find the link for the book in the resources link in the description. Even if you don't buy the book today, fear not. This is not the last time we will be visiting Joseph and his insightful work.